So, we can get another Bray Shaman or a Gorbel. Which, to be honest, I would like a Gorbel because they are going to be really tanky and very strong for the battles ahead. A quest has been issued, mighty lord. A great adventure beckons. Be wary, though. For while the potential rewards are great, so too are the perils. We're going to be holding off on this battle for a little bit. We are not ready for that yet. We're going to be taking our Gorbol here, and we're going to be putting our Gorbol into our army at some point here. So what we're going to do is upgrade Letharian Forest now to also have Winds of Magic, more Line of Sight, and we gain more uh, Dread faction-wide. Or what we could do is we could give our... We're going to upgrade this, actually, first. Um, so that we can have a better horde faction encampment. So now what we're going to do is we're going to... Slowly make our way over to Middenstead. Now, this is not a part of our Runation Grounds, but I want to get it out of the way so that Boris only has Westmund left. We're going to move our hero over here so that Boris thinks that we're coming from this direction. We're going to check our diplomacy one more time. Yes. We're going to end our turn. As you can see, Boris is now trying to recruit multiple Never. armies at once with multiple Impossible. lords. What we're going to do is we're actually going to assault the units of Boris Toddbringer's army here. And it looks like it ended up in a failure, but that is okay. We'll try again next turn. Emperor Karl Franz is over here, which is very interesting. Never. I think what we're actually going to do is take out Karl Franz with a little cheeky thing called Ambush Stance. In game, Carl Franz is trait. It says close victory, medium. So, the one thing we do have to worry about is the mortars and the Reichsguard, but we have Minotaurs and we have Cav to deal with that. So, anti infantry, no force penalty. Let's get on the battle against Carl Franz. So, Carl Franz is not yet on his mount, so this will make it actually a lot easier to deal with Carl Franz. We have the great swords here, who are anti-infantry, armor piercing, and armored. We have anti-large, armor piercing. We have shielded swordsmen. We have the hand gunners and the right guard, which are also anti-infantry. And then we have the anti-infantry. So what we're going to be doing is using our spirit leecher on the um, battle fronts as much as possible. We're going to be putting these units in the front to deal with the right guard. We're going to be putting these on the sides. We chafe. We're going to be using all our archers as much as possible to do as much damage as possible. We're going to be having our minotaurs charge from the back because these are anti-infantry. They should be able to deal with the cav. We're going to be having our gore, uh, our gore chariots deal with the um, mortars. Now what we're going to be doing is putting our these units in the back to deal with the range because the range won't be able to deal with even just these units. Especially since they're not Dowie range units. Now, we're going to be putting our shield units. Actually, our archers would work better on this side, I believe. Let's see here. Because we have a cliff. Actually, that's not too bad. We have a cliff right here, so they should be able to do pretty well. But let's, let's see if we can put them behind these guys first. See how that looks. I actually do prefer this better because then we have a back line to support us here. Now, let's grab our units here. And let's see. We're going to move these in the front. So we can kind of enclose Carl Franz into this fight. And we're going to be moving these in the front as well. Shielded, Vanguard Point, Stock, Expendable. These are also these are anti-large, actually. We're going to be putting these in the back to deal with the cab. Put these in the back to deal with the cab alongside the minotaurs here. And we're going to have one of these come in the front. 
with you with the great swords. And there you have it. Let's start the battle. We're going to have all our units ambush as much as possible. Looks like our Minotaurs didn't really get to go where they wanted to, but that's fine. We're going to have uh, Kesar Kwana go here. We're going to use Spirit Leech on the enemy here, and we're going to debuff the front line here. There we go. We're going to have them shoot as much arrows as we possibly need. So now that we got them out of the way, we're going to take our chariots. We're going to keep using our Minotaurs on the right card. We're going to take our chariots and start cleaning up the back lines here. Have these guys move closer into the battle. Come on, chariots. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. We're going to have our Minotaurs keep charging in here. We're going to bring these around. And have these shoot into the Halberdiers. Have these shoot into the uh, Halberdiers as well. Kesar Kwana is doing a great job against Kyle Franz here. We're going to grab more of our Spirit Leech here. We're going to use that on Carl Franz. And have these shoot into the Halberdiers. We're going to have these go into the Great Swordsmen. Have these shoot into the Swordsmen here. We're going to have this shoot into there. Now we're going to have this charge here. We're going to have our Razorboard Chariots charge into the back of the Halberdiers here to do some extra damage. It's called the Hammer of Anvil tactic here. To make the enemy break easier. As you can see, the enemy is about to break, and there we go. So what we're going to be doing is trying to get rid of their most powerful units in case they're able to run away. So where is their their mortars are over there? Where is their hand gunners and their cavalry? So where are our? Okay, they won't be able to catch up. We're going to go for the mortars. We're going to have him go for Carl Franz himself. Don't let Carl Franz get out of here. We're going to use Spirit Leech on Carl Franz. And that should be the end of Carl. Maybe not. There we go. Carl is now dead. Blech. With Carl dead, we have a chance of getting more magical items. Let's look at our Razorbird Cherry here. We're going to have them charge straight into the front there. Have them charge there. And look at that. We barely lost anything, and it said it was going to be a close defeat. What we're going to be doing now is hitting the fast-forward button. So where you position your troops matters to counter whatever they have. Send these guys over here to go deal with that. So we're going to send Kazark One Eye to go deal with this as well. Now let's look at our Bray Shaman here. We're going to use this on the ground here to give them a debuff. Have these charge this way. And there you have it. We have now beat Carl Franz and gained his trait very early in the game. And what this does is it gives us more runes for our rune nation. And we should be able to end the battle here because that's really far away. End battle. So, we lost 217 units. Well, they lost basically every single unit because they only have 50 units left. So there's no way that Emperor Carl Franz's army is coming back from this. As you can see, the true MVPs here are the um, Gore Herd alongside this Spearman. This guy here and our Razorguard Chariots. Razorguard Chariots are very strong. The one thing with Chariots I do have to say is you have to constantly make sure to constantly micromanage them because they will get stuck very often. And there you have it. We have now killed Carl Franz's army. The only thing that got away was their Reichsguard. So, we have full beastal raids. What we're going to be doing is actually grabbing the uh, money. We could grab the heals, but we'll be able to go encampment stance. So, we're going to grab the money here. And Kyle France should be dead. Now, we have our Tuscar Chariot with Kazrak the One Eye as well. 
and we gain the trait unit experience gain plus 10%, which is actually pretty strong. Now let's grab our next skill. We're going to be grabbing Lightning Strike. Our Brace Shove in here, we're going to be grabbing Soul Blight yet again. And now let's look at our units here. We should be fine. Ethereum Forest, we should be able to upgrade as well. But we're going to be holding off from that. Let's check our Diplomacy. The Empire. Actually, let's check it with Arian Forest real quick here. If we upgrade this, we gain more Dread from battles. That actually would be very powerful for us. But let's check our encampment here first. We need at least 4,000 gold for this, so let's actually back up with this for a second. Let's look at our encampment here. So once we go in encampment stance, what can we recruit here? We can make this building stronger, which actually would probably be a smart idea. Or, we can grab some Centigors, get some more Razor Gore Chariots, and some more Cav. Razor Gore Chariots, Tusk Gore Chariots. Um, I'm thinking that we should... We can get another recruitment for another Razor Gore. Hmm. So the question here is, what do we want to do? What is our army lacking? We have ranged, we have cavalry, we have a good front line. Our army really isn't lacking anything at the moment, but we definitely want to spend the money to upgrade and probably get another building in our building here where we have the money. Or we, what we can do is get the Saigor later on. So what I'm actually going to do is hold off and we're going to be getting the Saigor um, thing later on here, and we're going to end our turn. Who calls? We're going to be ending our turn pretty quick here. We could do this though, which would gain us dread gain from battles, which actually is really strong. We're gonna go with that. We're gonna end our turn. Okay. So now on turn eight, we have the choice to pick between what we want here. So, almost fight or recruitment capacity. No matter how far, we gain more campaign movement range. All damage units will be fully replenished, which we really don't need that. Uh, dread cost, minus has been increasing capacity of Chaos Giants, Chaos Spawn, Gore Herd, and Gore Shields. We don't really need that right now either. I would say we're going to be doing the campaign movement so we can actually uh, juke around um, Gore's Toddbringer right here. And so that we can actually do some damage to this settlement here. Gain some more income. Um, I'm actually going to be probably fighting this battle manually, just so we lose less troops. Um, your choice if you want to auto-resolve or not. I like to fight battles manually to lose less. Okay, we're going to assess the battlefield. Their archers are on the side. The spearmen are on the side as well. So we're going to be using our tactics around that. What we're going to be doing is bogging down this left side so that they won't be able to recover from us bogging it down. So we're going to put our archers in the front here so they do as much volleys as possible when we get right into the battle here. Or we can bog down this side. We're going to grab these guys in their own group, them in their own group, them in their own group. Boom, boom, boom. We're actually going to have... Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to have the Minotaur, and we're going to have the Gorby's Chariots come this direction. We're going to bog down this side of the battlefield here. So we can do as much damage as possible. We're bring these guys in the we're actually gonna put these guys on this side so our chafe units will take the most damage from their arrows we're gonna take our shieldmen and we're gonna put them here we're gonna take our other shieldmen and put them here whoops that's not what i wanted other shieldmen and put them here we're gonna take our minotaurs put them on this side and our razor chariots and put them on this side 
We're gonna put the brace on this side, and we're gonna put him right here. So now we're going to start the battle. We're going to move these forward. We're gonna have this. We're actually gonna hold off on this because what we're gonna want to do is bog these guys down here. We're gonna move that. Oh, we're gonna move this forward. To go here. We're gonna have these guys charge forward here. And we're gonna have these guys charge forward there. We're gonna have these charge forward here. And what we're doing is we're bogging them down. So now we can charge in, and we can also charge in with our Minotaurs too, and that is gonna hurt. Now we're gonna have our Spirit uh, Bray Shaman get into the battle here. We're also gonna charge this forward as well. And now we're gonna let loose with our arrows. I'm actually probably gonna do this instead, so we can get some more arrows in on the battlefield here and stretch it out. Our Minotaur should be able to do some heavy damage over here. They should be able to hold there. What we're going to do is weaken these guys so our weakest unit's actually stronger. We're having him charge into Crawfield with his chariot, which actually should do some really strong damage. Then stack together, we're going to have our Bray Shaman move forward here. Our archers should be able to cover the whole battlefield now. Now that they're retreating, we're going to keep hitting them. We're going to grab our Minotaurs, we're going to charge them out, and then we're going to charge them all the way around and then back in again. This is called cycle charging, and we're going to be breaking the enemy. Now, Kazakh One Eye on his chariot is now dealing with the archers. There, we're going to be having our, we're going to be having our uh, Rizigar chariots come into the back lines now. So we do a little bit extra damage, and we're going to use Spirit Leech on these guys since they don't have a lord. Now, with that charge, it should break the rest of the battle, and we have victory. So, like we did before, we're going to be getting as much kills as possible before the end of the battle. Just to gain more experience for our units. We're going to hit fast forward and watch this play out. Ooh, look at that. That's going to be scary. Imagine that charging at you. That would be just absolutely deadly. Now, our Razor Guard Chariots. We're going to have them go for the one that's running the furthest away. And we're also going to have Kazrak also run for that one as well. We're going to have these guys go for them too. And let's check the rest of the battle here. The Minotaurs are dealing with that. These guys are dealing with that. So now there's only the one that Kazrek is dealing with at the moment. And we're going to charge these guys in too to get more XP to make our units stronger for the upcoming battle with Boris Toddbringer and decisive victory. The Beastmen are so strong with Vanguard deployment because they can get their units where they need to faster. We lost 114 units, which is A-OK. -okay because it was only our chafe units here, and they also got a decent amount of killing with the debuff that we provided on their units. So GG. So right now, before the end of the turn, we had enough beast or rampage. So we're going to be focusing on getting... Hmm. We're going to be focusing on getting probably the raise in advance so we can heal up our units. And continue from there. Actually, yeah, we don't really need to heal up our units all that much, but that money is looking pretty juicy. We're actually going to grab the money. Now we have 5,000 monies again. We're going to be grabbing our next thing of Lightning Strike as well. We're going to be putting ourselves into Encampment Stance, and we're going to upgrade our encampment by grabbing... I think this is 6,000. Dang. What we'll grab is, we will grab the... Uh, we have more than enough cavalry at the moment. More than enough dogs. So we don't need it at the moment. We actually don't need anything at the moment. So we're going to save our money. And we're going to hold off. Hero not moved. Let's see what we can do with our hero here. We can either assault these units. Let's assault Boris Toddbringer's units. Critical failure, our Gore Beast has died. That actually sucks, but it is what it is. We can't do anything about it. So now, we're going to be trying to finagle our way into these three armies to see what we can do here. Let's check our diplomacy. There you have it. So, we're going to move forward just slightly. We're going to be hiding right here. We're actually going to just end our turn. We have Boris, we have Bernal Mahler. 
we'll see what we'll see what they do here. We'll see what they do. And it looks like Boris is going to be doing exactly what we thought he would. They usually have a settlement down here as well. So what Boris is going to be doing is most likely moving his settlement down this way to um, protect their last settlement. Also, it looks like the Black Pit, they actually attacked Boris, so they made, a, made him weaker for us, which is actually really nice. What we're going to be doing is spending our next skill point here, and we're actually going to be going for evasion. We're going to be attacking the um, unit on the outside first and then the city here. Let's check our uh, thing here. We're going to be going for raining blood so we gain more ammunition firing. And we also gain uh, more reload uh, time with our units here. And we're going to keep saving up our money for now. We want to get this at least to 24 if we can. If we can't, well, it is what it is. Who calls? So now we're going to be taking Kedrek one eye. We're going to be taking him. We're going to be moving into Curtis. And it looks like they're going to be running away, which is perfectly fine with us. We have more than enough movement to attack him and then attack the settlement here. But I think what we're going to do is get rid of the settlement first. So they can take more attrition. So now we are going to play this battle manually because it does not give us a favorable auto resolve. We know we can win this easy peasy. Okay, so all our all their units are in the back corner over here. So that is going to be interesting. What we're going to be doing is that means we have more time to build ourselves up to then attack. So it's going to be pretty hard for us to get behind on their archers since they're hugging the wall. What we're actually going to do is we're going to be putting our Minotaurs, we're going to be putting our Razor Chariots in the woods here, and we're going to be putting our Minotaurs in the woods here too, so we can come from this right side and charge down the hill and do some massive damage. So, let's grab our archers here. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming from this side and hitting really hard on the left flank here. They have no choice but to bunch up, and we can charge them from the back. So the reason why we're going on this side is that they turn this way so we can get a better charge in on the back. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving these guys right here. We're moving these guys right here. We're moving these guys in the back as well. We're going to grab our lord and we're going to grab our hero. And we're also going to put the hero in the woods here with the minotaurs. Now let's grab our last two units here and we're going to put these in the back too. So where are their units positioned on the battlefield? They have spearmen, 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 swordmen, spearmen. Okay, so it looks like what we're going to be doing is bogging down this side and then pushing this way. Let's start the battle. We're going to move our position of our army about right here and see what they do. Now, with this army over here, we're going to move this forward up into the woods as far as we possibly can go. Same with the Razor Bird Chariots. What we're trying to do is still keep them in hidden stance. What we could do is actually use our Lord to go deal with the archers in the back by himself while our main army catches up. Because he does have a chariot. Move forward here. Where would we need to go to make our arrow shoot forward? We need to go right about here. We're going to have Kazrak move around a little bit. We're going to have them still moving this direction, which is perfect. We're trying to do is get their army to rotate around on us. 
Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having our entire army bog them down. One unit at a time here. Now they don't really know how to react at the moment, so this is kind of funny. Have Kezrak come this way. Have all this go this way. Now we're going to take our archers, and we're going to put them this direction. Now it looks like they're going to be charging up the hill. What we're going to do is get ready for that. We're going to have Kazbrak charge in here as well. They're not going to be able to hold up pretty but strong to this. We're actually going to just bog down this side as much as possible. We're going to have Kazbrak run through here. Get into the back lines while we can. Have them rotate this direction. Because for some reason they're just letting us through. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And we're going to have him charge straight into the archers here. You move them this way. We're going to bog down this side. Because right charge here. All our archers, we're going to move now closer. And we're going to go this side right here. Bog them down. Now here comes the fun part. Let's have our army from here charge down this way. We're going to have our archers now start picking off their uh, key archers here, too. We're going to have them start picking off key uh, targets. We're actually going to have these guys move forward more. These guys are fine where they're at. We're going to have Kezrak now charge over here. This should do a bunch of damage to them. Nope, no, 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 no. We're going to have you charge this way. We're going to have our Shaman go here. We're going to use this. Now we're gonna do this as well. Because now they've just lost their armor, so we're gonna try to hit as many things inside of this as possible. Now Kezrak is gonna be going after that there, and we're gonna be having them go there, and now we're gonna take our Razor Guard Chariots, and we're gonna go straight for those archers as well. We're gonna have our Magic Caster get closer to the battlefield here. We're bogging down this side, which is perfect. We're gonna now bog down this side here. You guys keep shooting them off. The Minotaur from the Chariot should be able to make quick work of these archers with Kazarak here. Now we're going to be having them shoot this target here. Okay, we're going to rotate these archers to be this direction now, so they can start shooting down this direction. We're going to take our Spirit Link and we're going to put that on their Lord, so that they um, take a lot more damage. Our Chariots we're going to have now charge into here along with them. And Kezarak, which will do a lot of breaking right there, and victory is ours. So what we're going to be doing, like we have done before, is gaining as much experience as possible with our troops. So we're going to fast forward here. And then shoot that lord. Get him out of the picture. There we go. And then shoot over there. Now let's grab our Rizgord Chariot here. We're going to charge them down. We're going to grab this Rizgord Chariot here. We're going to have them charge that down. We're going to have our Minotaur charge this down as well. Now, and then charge here. Spirit Link doesn't really work very good on, um, or Spirit Link, sorry, not Spirit Link, I'm thinking World of Warcraft. Doesn't really work too well on sing or multiple targets, but it works very well on, on multiple entities. Now, that should be enough casualties. Let's end the battle. Decisive victory, here we go. So as you can see, our front line did take quite a bit of damage, but it was well worth it for the battle here. As you can see, a show of force, taking one side, bogging it down. The enemy will get fearful and charge everything that way. And you can use your magic to debuff, cast spells, and just do a lot of damage to the enemy and get some charges in behind. As well as Kerzark One Eye has a very strong chariot since it's a single chariot to push through the enemies easily. There you have it. We are going to, we are going to, uh, loot and raise, even though we need the replenishment. Well done, my lord. The marks of ruination accumulate. accumulate mm -hmm. at your I want to at least get twenty-four. The dread felt by this land's so we should be able to get some ruination from now masters. attacking uh, Nordland. 
The stronger a blood group. We now got a Regiment of Renown as well, but I don't like to use Regiment of Renown unless I absolutely need them. And now we finally got our last Lightning Strike. So, what we're going to do is we have 8,000 monies. We're going to use that to actually, instead of getting... Ooh, actually, Tuskor Chariots, Centaurs. Mm, we could grab some more Bray Shamans, but I think what I want to do is we're actually going to go to our Rewards of Dread. And I want to grab the... Um, Blind Eye of Seeing for the Savage Domination for the Saigor. So we can use that on our Bray Shaman. So that they can actually summon Saigors to help us in battle. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go to Well and Cave Stance. And we're going to move forward. And get ready for our next battle. I would at least settle for at least 20 for this ritual at least. But as you can see... We have currently pretty much wiped out all of Wissenberg here. Or Middenheim, sorry. But we're doing really well. And also the Black Pit is also at war with them. So what we could do is leave them to their own devices. And we could go north to take out this settlement here. To gain even more March of Runation. Which it looks like it's still only worth zero. So we could hold off on that. But I think what we might do is actually attack the Black Pit next turn. So we can get what we uh, our number that we want. So let's hit Diplomacy, and let's see what we get here. What? Let's see what happens next. End turn. 